All right, welcome back. So keeping in mind the two things we just talked about around designing state, minimizing the state that we store, and then also making sure that we're trying to centralize state in parents to support the downward data flow, let's now talk about an example of component design for a very, very simple lottery application. So imagine we want this functionality where we have how many balls is this? Six lottery balls, lotto balls, and then a button that you can click to generate new numbers. So all of these numbers, the values are going to be between one and 40 by default, and there should be six balls also by default. So we click generate and we should get new numbers, six new balls showing up from one to 40 are those potential values. But I also want it to be extendable. I wanna be able to reuse it in different situations. So I could have a mini daily lotto instead of this one that has six balls. I want a mini one that has four and the numbers only go from one to 10 rather than one to 40. So keep that in mind, we wanna be able to reuse and make this a flexible component. So if you'd like, stop the video now and think about what are the components we need here? How many could we get away with? How much state do we need to store and where do we store it? This is a relatively simple example, but just pause, keep the two things we talked about in the last couple of videos in mind, and then when you're ready, we'll move on. So which components do we need? What props will they need? And what state will we need? Here's one version. This is the, well, the version that I'm going to say is best. The lottery component needs to have a couple of props. The title, so that we can alter, you know, what title is displayed up top. Lotto, mini daily. I didn't really go over that one as much. Then the number of balls that it should display. So there's a default. We want it to display six if you don't specify it. But if you do specify, then you can say four or 10 or however many balls you want there to be in your lotto then the max number, the max value for each ball. The default will be one to 40, so 40 is the max, but you could specify 10, like we saw in this mini example right here, in this case. So that brings us to state. So we could store the state, the random numbers, in each of the ball components, which we haven't even talked about. But because of what we talked about in the last video, it's a lot better to just store the state, centralize it in this parent, the lottery component. So all we need is an array of numbers. That's all that changes. Those numbers are random numbers. Maybe there's four random numbers. Maybe there's six or 10. Maybe it's from one to 40 or one to 10. It doesn't matter, but it's just an array. It's a list of numbers. And that's the only thing that needs to be stateful in the whole application. And then we need to have a button or some sort of event that is triggered that regenerates these numbers in the state. But then the render method of our lottery component is going to take these numbers and pass them in from the state as props to our display lottery ball component. And our lottery ball component, all it needs is a prop called num. So we pass in that number and it will display it correctly. State, nothing. Events, nothing. It's a display component. It doesn't do anything except display a number and a little circle around it and some text. That's it. And it's re-rendered over and over as things change from the parent component. As this state changes, when you click a button, it's going to trigger a re-render. Those values from the state that are regenerated will be passed down as props into our display lottery ball component. All right, so if you'd like, in the next video, I'm going to build this and just show how it would work. Uh, but if you feel good about it and good about the ideas, minimizing state, downward data flow, all that stuff, you can skip that. Uh, but it's always good. Just take a look at the code, make sure it makes sense to you.